Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are Pull on the Call podcast. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And today we are so excited to be here with the amazing pole competitor and pole coach, Kanisha. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out and, and be willing to share your story with us on our podcast today. Yes, truly. Thank you so much. <laughs> our pleasure. So excited. So I guess we'll jump right into it with, and uh, hopefully, it, no, it definitely is, is an easy one. What brought you to pole dance? <laughs> Honestly, I literally three years ago, almost three years ago, I saw it on Instagram. I thought it was cool. I thought it looked challenging. I thought it looked fun. And I was on an assignment in central Pennsylvania for work. And so I went to a pole studio that was there by myself. And then from there, it was love. So <laughs> And that's really what brought me to pole dancing. I liked it and I said, I'm gonna do it. And so I did it. <laughs> I love it. What, what pole studio was that? Um, it was originally called Pole Fit by Teresa in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. They have a new name now. And I don't remember specifically what the name is, but at that time it was Pole Fit by Teresa. Um, yeah, so they rebranded, I think. Gotcha. <laughs> that's awesome did you have any um prior movement background or dance background before pole or you just were like that looks cool <laughs> yeah no I never never was a dancer I was never gymnastics none of that I had no dance background or no movement background it just looked cool um and I liked Really, I'm, I really like tricks. Um, so I really like the trick aspect of things because it just looked like, wow, that looks really strong. Like, I like that. And I've been an athlete all my life. So, you know, I like a good challenge. And uh, yeah, no, no movement background at all, though. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> just, and you're, um, I'm the same way. I'm obsessed with tricks. Like that's so strong. That's so flexy. I just want to try. Exactly. <laughs> like I want it. I want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you were an athlete and said, "Do you, um, what kind of sports did you do?" Um, I started as a basketball player for a while um, through like elementary school and middle school. And then in middle school, I started track and field. And then I dropped basketball eventually to do track and field um, only. And then I track and field took me to college. So I did track and field through college too competitively. So yeah, loved it. But when it was done, I needed something else to do. And so her pole came in a little bit there. Yeah. Wow. So you've been like active your whole life. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, I really, really like um, exercise. Um, it's a really like great stress reliever for me. And like when I'm off and I'm not like not on my schedule doing my certain like things, I feel the differences in my stress and my mental health too. Like I just really like having something to work for and um, pole really gives me that um, on and off the pole. I really like the, what it gives you in terms of having something to work for. So yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how um because pole is more of like a like an, an art when it comes to like movement if it um where you come from the track and field do you have any like things that helped you from the sports world um you know besides like being awesome probably a training and like like yeah. moving your body in those ways but like as far as like the art part of it was that something that came naturally too or was it like oh no <laughs> Yeah, like the art part of it doesn't come naturally. Like the movement part of it definitely does not come as natural to me. I I want to be better at being like being better at movement and freestyle and just letting the move like the music take you and things like that. It doesn't always come naturally. However, um, I've been trying to get better at that. I think the biggest thing that track and field gave me is the like discipline of having to do things like to be good at this you have to train this and that's about it like it just is not going to come because you want it to be there um so that's like I think that's the biggest thing that I got from being an athlete is the fact that you have to be disciplined um and you have to be your biggest motivator um you have to be your biggest fan like 
no one's going to do it other than you. If you're not ready to do it, then you're not going to get the result. It's not going to pop out of nowhere. So, but still working on the art form of pole dancing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, Are I could we say just to, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, just seeing your your Instagram and your performance, um, wow. your performances that you've done in competitions, you have the art in there for sure. You're very flowy. That's really <laughs> because like it's it's so nice when someone else tells you because you're of course I I'm also my biggest critic, so I don't feel like it's that great. But I you know I do like to move to the music and. I think I do more of like that. I like to do the tricks to the movement and like, you know, these certain tricks would work really good at this part of the song type of thing. And like how that type of flow, I really do like, I will say that um, it's just the dance, like the other dancing. I feel so awkward. I feel like a robot when I do that part. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I feel that too. Sometimes it's like, what do we do when we're off this pole? Yeah, I'm like, what, like, what happens next? <laughs> Can I do more tricks instead? I'll yes. do that for you. <laughs> so, so, so trick heavy. I'm like, all right, I'm not doing a trick. What happens next? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Um, so how did you end up starting to teach and what training did, I guess it's a twofer. Oh my God. How did you start teaching and what training did you do to start coaching? Yeah. Um, I, I started teaching in January of this year. Um, we were at like my studio hosted, we're not hosting, we were at an event in town and uh, like, it's kind of just to promote the studio and they like had students come out and um, kind of hang out with the studio, like all the inst other instructors. Like I wasn't an instructor at, a at the time, but we were ex like, you know, invited to come out and hang out with the instructors and like just promote the studio. And then all of a sudden, I don't know how I ended up like teaching beginner, like, like a fireman spin to like a line of people at this event. And then the studio owner was like, oh, wow, like she did really good with that. And then that's how that sparked the whole, like, you'd be really good as an instructor. Um, I don't have any, like, I'd really want to get like, um, ooh, certified for a second. That word just was gone on me. I do want to get certified. My, my, we did in-house, my, then the owner at the studio does in-house training. So she trains all of her instructors on the moves that are like we have like certain moves for different levels. So you get trained in-house on those moves and how to teach them and make sure you're guard, uh, guarding. And um, oh, what's the word? When you have to, I just spotting. Did, spotting, thank you. Oh my gosh, I was like, yeah. what's the word for that? <laughs> uh, spotting techniques and things like that. So we was trained in-house. I currently only teach like a uh, beginner, like pole, like level one and two, which is our beginner levels um, for the most part. So. Yeah, I've been trained on in-house on both of those levels. So yeah. I love that. That's amazing that your studio offers that. It really yeah. Um, how do you say it opens up opportunities for others? That really is incredible. Yeah. 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 But eventually do I do want certification. I eventually do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's great. And to know more is is awesome. So yeah. yeah. Did you ever think that you wanted to? to be a teacher or was that just your your teacher was just like hey <laughs> I had thought about it like in the past before that like I well last year I guess like I said to my husband I was like I feel like I could be a good instructor and then it just happened so <laughs> and so I did say that to him in the past like that the year before I became an instructor like last year and I guess I just talked it up into existence yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think a lot of us when we come into pole too, we're like, it's like a hobby, but then it becomes all encompassing and now it's a career. Yeah. 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 I, I do. I really like instructing. I, I like I just like seeing like people like progress. I like to see the progress, like the pole pole gris. Um when people like <laughs> Like from they come in the door, like, you know, when you have like those, like Friday, I teach on Friday nights, which I'll be teaching tonight. And like just having those like consistent people that have been coming to like the beginner classes and seeing them like 
get better and them like getting excited about them getting better. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, oh my gosh, like I did this move and I didn't, I didn't think I could ever do this move. You know what I mean? Like just seeing that is like so rewarding. I just love seeing people get better and like seeing the growth and seeing what commitment and like putting in the time can really get you. It's so, it's it's so rewarding. (laughs) It's truly beautiful to see people of different backgrounds, shapes, sizes, yes. colors, just like achieve crazy shit. And I am so stealing that whole grass word. <laughs> yes, yes. I did not make it up. I think uh, I got my studio made it up, but yeah. I like it. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so do you want to tell us a little bit about your studio and where you're located and what you teach? Um, yes. Oh, you already <laughs> told us what you teach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Pink Ambition um, Fitness, Pink Ambition Pole Fitness. Uh, we are located in, in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Um, we offer classes all the way from beginner all the way to advanced. We have seven levels um, and we have pole one classes, pole two, pole three, four, and then pole five and then pole six, seven. So that's how we group everything together. And then we have one choreography class. We are very trick heavy studio. Um, I think that it's like different based on where you go, but we are very trick heavy in terms of what we offer. Every once in a while, our schedule will change where we offer like um, flexibility classes at times or conditioning classes at times. But it depends on like sometimes like the time of year or what students want, basically, you know, like if more students want this and there are more students going to these classes, then obviously, you know, we'll offer more of those classes. Um, What was the other part of that question? I forgot. I think that was I think that was all of it (laughs) but now I'm wondering about the the levels the seven levels yeah I know right that's incredible yeah Yeah. yeah. do you want to break those down yeah um so poll one is like you've never pulled before ever um and then poll two is like like poll one is like a lot of like beginner like spins um, some things that we have in there is like fan kick, um, chair spin, front knee hook, back knee hooks, um, the basic climb. And then, uh, pull two is like a continuation of that, but there's things just get a little bit harder. You don't go upside down just yet. Um, but it's, it's a little bit harder and you learn different climbs. Like you have, we have side climb in there. We have the forearm climb in there. Um, I'm trying to think of like figurehead and uh, um, I'm trying to think of any other teddy bear, like, sir. So like a little bit harder, like, you know, you kind of wet your feet and pull one and then pull two is like the harder beginner side. So once we got people committed <laughs> and pull one and then they keep going and then, you know, the more grips to your body too. And then pull three, four is when you start inverting. Um, they're together because they're all, they're, or they're all like inversion, like beginner inversion moves. And it's not all just inver- inverted moves, um, but a lot majority of it, we have things like the bird in there, Gemini, Scorpio is level three. And then level four would be like your like hip hold, like hip hold start, like the one where you kind of have your hip, legs out. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that we have in level four. Um, of course, when I like, you have to think about it. You're like, what do we do? <laughs> But it's like a couple, like the the inverted moves get harder. Um, level five is when you start getting to like the more advanced things. Um, we have like a lot of like uh, some more splittier moves too in there. Um, darn it, I'm trying to think. What do we have in our levels? They're like <laughs> like um, the archers in there, and then so and then also what else do we have in there? I'm trying to think of the this type of move, but I completely it's like it's here, but I can't see it. But the, it gets more advanced in the levels, like less um, points of contact too, um, and just harder moves. Pull six seven is our most advanced, and that's where you get like we have like our Iron X in that level and. Um, you know, like Aisha's and um, Cocoon and just to name like a few in that level. Um, So yeah, that's kind of like how we split it up. It's like slowly getting harder and harder. So like it's uh, to not overwhelm people. 
because I know sometimes like when you have like big beginner classes, it can be hard when you have like a lot of different moves in there. So like, I think pole one and two have like, I want to say like 25 moves in them each. So you're not like, it's not too overwhelming. And some people like, some people just like to have a box to check and like having that box to check and say, like, I can move up to the next level makes you feel good. And to move on to the next, like to, we have like sign offs on moves, like to sign off on moves, you have to just be able to do it safely and um, be able to hold it for a certain amount of time. It doesn't have to be perfect. So some people like, we kind of really leave it up to the person that's in the class, the, you know, the student, like if you like get it on the first time and you do it safely and you can hold it, you can sign off on it. But if some, a lot of people are like, no, I really like want to get better at it before I sign off on it. And, you know, we do tell people like, if you sign off on something, doesn't mean it's the last time you'll see it. You're going to still learn it in classes because we go through all these moves again. Um, but we, it's really like dependent on the student. We don't try to force people to move up in level. We like to keep people like comfortable at where they're at, whatever is most comfortable for you. Like if you want to stay in pole one and that's where you want to stay, that's, that's fine. You know, whatever your comfort level is, you never want, we never want people to feel like they're being forced or this is like, you know, a lot of like pressure on them to be able to do this or be able to do that because other people are doing it. So, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like I that love format that though. Yeah. 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 And the, I like the progression mentioned... and allowing them. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, the, <laughs> the check boxes, because a lot of students are like, uh, when do I progress? Like, what is yeah. the next for me? But that's really clear. Yeah. And I was a check yeah. box student. Like, I'm like, I want to, because I was an athlete, like, I'm very competitive with myself. And I'm like, I need to get to this. I need to get to this. I need to do this. Like, so. Yeah, that's how I was too. And I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That, um, wow, it makes me rethink a lot of things. But anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also um, you mentioned too, because at the beginning, sometimes the students will get intimidated by a lot of things. So like having, you right. know, these are the 25 things you're going to learn in this in this level one class. Yeah. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Like, that's all you're going to learn. Don't worry. When you get to the next level, you get to the next level. And I, we try to like tie in like lower level things into the higher level classes too, because, you know, people like you forget. And also like mm-hmm. knowing how to do that one move and comboing it together is completely two different things. So like when we get to higher level, we try to like add in lower level moves. So like, like, oh, okay, I can make that lead into this, even though it's a pull one move we can still lead it into a pole two move or a pole three move. You know, everything is connected in that sense. Yeah, love yeah. it. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. You've created a system. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Oh, I love this. I love this next question. So what is your favorite pole trick and your pole nemesis trick? See, my, pole, my favorite pole trick Every freestyle, everything, I, I always go back to a Superman. I love <laughs> the Superman. Like, I try to make my favorite pole trick any other move, but it, it really is a Superman. Like, I think, like, majority of my videos on Instagram have a Superman in it. Like, <laughs> so funny. I read that in your Instagram, and I was like, the Superman, that's, like, the most painful. <laughs> I love, love. I don't, it's not, and I, I know it's like painful for some people, but I don't think it's that pain. It's not that painful for me. So I'm just like, yeah, I can just hang out here. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. I love a Superman. How can I get into it? And how can I get out of it? Like, I really, truly love, 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 love a Superman. Um, yeah. My nemesis trick, it depends on what I'm working on at the time. <laughs> Um, but right now, my nemesis trick is a Gennaro because I really want a Gennaro so bad. I haven't worked on it in a while, but I, I want it so bad. And I've been trying to work on my back flexibility because I know it's my back flexibility. I have the strength. I just don't have the flexibility for it. But if I speak it up into existence, it's going to come, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I love that. I can't wait to see it when you get it. Yeah. yeah. I, I really want it so bad. Hey, I love a Gennaro it. too. Yeah, it's gonna look so beautiful on you. <laughs> yes. so awesome. And then I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the Gennaro for me is so elusive. Like I had it, and then I lost it, and then like it was back, and I put yeah. it on the stage, and now it's gone again. 
I just I think love I only got it like, like once, well, but then never. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on, don't do me like that. Right, like, you just die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you're right though it does it's a combination of strength and flexibility and I think that's why it keeps going and leaving because I keep working on flexibility then working on strength yeah <laughs> <Working> <laughs> on flexibility yeah <laughs> oh my gosh well what does your training schedule look like do you have like um cross training stuff that goes on or is it all just pull um I'm a big promoter of cross training I love cross training. Um, I think it's like the most important, like it's pole is important and practice is important, but what you do off the pole is also like very, very important. Like I can't say how much I love cross training. Uh, <laughs> my uh, schedule changes here and there, but right now I am trying to stick to, um, I cross train in terms of strength training. I weight lift. Um, I have like a home gym in my basement and I weight train about two days a week, Monday and Wednesday mornings. And then I try to train flexibility two days a week on Tuesdays and Thursday nights after work. Um, and then I've just been starting to try and work on handstands too, like once a week. And then I pull like two times a week right now. I do not pull that often, but I find that I can do more with cross training because I can, it's easier to get things that I want if I do the cross training to get there. And then, so when I go to do my pole training only two times a week, I can get the things that I want to get because I've been working on the cross training to get there instead of, you know, forcing my body into things sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's my schedule right now. Sometimes it changes. Um, and then I only, I instruct on Fridays too, but like Fridays are my day off from my, um, nine to five job. So, uh, I like usually like do sometimes I train flexibility or something or handstands on that day sometimes too. And then I'll go to the studio for like three to four hours and just train whatever. Like if I want to just freestyle, I'll freestyle. If I want to dance to a certain song, I'll dance to it. Or if I want to like, I really want to work on these specific tricks, I'll do that. And then I'll stay until it's time for me to teach at 5.30. So sometimes I, I can be at the studio from like, 12 to like eight at night. And um, yeah, I just, I love it. I mean, I'm crazy. I've, I've, I've pulled for like six hours straight for once before. And I just, I really loved it. Um, but yeah, I usually try to cross train on, I mean, pull on Fridays and then maybe sometimes Sundays. I try not to do two days in a row for anything. Cause I do not want to uh, lead to any injuries uh, from overuse. Um, but yeah, I try to do that aspect. And then Saturdays, I just, whatever happens, happens. I think that's usually when I do handstands. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm so conditioned. That's such a busy schedule. Uh, I can't wait to get yeah. to that. <laughs> I mean, it's not always perfect. I will say that it's not always like, I'm not like going to act like I'm always sticking to the schedule all the time. Like the last two weeks have been all over the place for me. And I, I haven't been on schedule like I usually am. Um, and I can feel it in terms of how it affects my stress levels and things like that. But when I'm on schedule and I, I love when I'm on schedule for like a month straight, it makes me feel like I feel alive. Like I feel like I am unstoppable. Like I'm coming through, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it's not always perfect, but I do, like I said, that's what had like being an athlete all of my life has really given me is like the discipline. If I want to be good at this, if I want to be able to do this splitty move on the pole, I got to be, I got to train flexibility because I'm not a naturally flexible person. Um, I only just got my split this May. I've never done a split a day in my life until May. Um, so like, I'm not naturally flexible or anything like that. So I just, I have to work. I feel like you have to work for what you want. And so I'm going to put the time into work for it. So I can feel like I accomplished something. Yeah. Yeah. And now you got it. All you have to do is maintain it, which is easier than yeah. getting it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. I love it. Alrighty. So, okay. Do you offer <laughs> any other services to pole dancers? or any oh, yeah. online in-person options? I know you teach on Friday, anything else? Yeah. 
right now, nothing else, but maybe in the future at some point. Um, that's all I'll say about that. But yeah. <laughs> right now, all I teach is classes on Fridays, obviously in my studio. Also, I do private lessons um, and private parties too. If you want a private party in Harrisonburg, Virginia, at Pink Convention Pole Fitness, we're here. <laughs> but yeah, no, and we don't do any online right now, but like I, uh, I do want to get into something related to pole and conditioning and strength training in the future. So that's what I'll say about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <Can't> wait. <laughs> I know, right? Same here. I wish you the best. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially since you, you have such like a great background as an athlete and you're you're sharing this with all of, you know, the pole world, which is maybe dancers and like yes. putting all of it together. <laughs> yeah. Um I was thinking I need a a discipline schedule like that because I just have a dance background and didn't think of myself as an athlete before pole dance. So it's a little bit different. (laughs) And I know that is different because, you know, pole just brings so many different people together. And like so many people cross paths here, like people who are dancers or people who weren't dancers or people who weren't athletes. And then they became like, you know, like it's just so crazy (laughs) how that kind of ties in and things like that. But yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Right. Like I think there's a lot of secrets. (laughs) because I you know I didn't really think about cross training before really we started interviewing all of these different wonderful people um in the pole world so it's given me a lot of a lot of information and hopefully for our listeners too so thank you for providing services yeah Uh, yeah I I really do love cross training I'm also like in my uh Muggle job. I know you guys said muggle job. In my nine to five, <laughs> I am a physical therapist. So uh-huh. like the way I think about, I just think about it as in like, this is your body, like injury prevention. And this is how your body needs, what your body needs for this certain move. And if it doesn't have it in the future, you might, might, might get an injury. And then you don't also like, if you overtrain pole, you can get injured too, because you're just overusing the same muscles over and over and over again. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about like cross training because of the fact of the injury prevention side. Um, uh, I've never had a, a true like pole dancing injury in the whole time that I've been a pole dancer. Um, outside of like polling while drunk, like trying to, you know, I was drunk and I tried to hop on the pole and the, I don't count that because I was drunk and that's on my, but we are. I, yeah. <laughs> But that was that one time. But outside of that, I have never had any pole injuries that have like kept me from polling at all because I try to be really in tune with my body and I try to cross train so that I can do things. And I try not to do things that I know that I cannot do. Like if I tried it once and I know I can't do it, I'm not going to just, you know, push my body into it and try to force it. Like I just try to listen to what my body is telling me. And then from that information that I get, I can take that to my cross training and say like, this is what I need to work on so that this is more attainable for me um, in that aspect. So that's how I like to put everything together. <laughs> yeah, Love I'm it. glad you shared that. Oftentimes as pole dancers, we push ourselves when, and we don't think about that conditioning aspect that we should be doing. We're just like, oh, if I can get it once for that Instagram shot, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, we don't think about the damage it does to ourselves. So thank you for sharing that. It's, exactly. it's an important reminder. Yeah. And um, sorry, I keep talking. <laughs> but like, I just want people like, I just want everyone, like all pole dancers, like it's an art form and it's amazing. And it's an art form. I love it as an art form. And it, but it's also a sport. Like it, it really does the amount of sh- like strain you're putting on your body it's like insane. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, like to do, to invert upside, like to go upside down, it, like it's not easy. Um, and it's just like certain things, like there's so much strain that's put on your body and with the art of pole dancing that I think we just need to like combine all together as one a little bit more. Like I, like I said, I love it as an art form, but also I want like others to think of it as the sport that it is too, because to do the art form, you have to be, strong and you have to be flexible and you have to you know have to have this body awareness you have to have this balance and things like that so there's so much that goes into it other than it just being pole dancing um 
And I think it's really important because I don't want people to get injured and then feel like they have to be sitting out for a long time or work through their injury because you really shouldn't. I don't want people to do that. And then end up being more injured in the long run. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I really, I really love cross training <laughs> and injury prevention. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So you have such a wealth of knowledge, uh, your physical therapy background and everything. <laughs> That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Man. I really do like to bring that to classes. Like as an instructor, I guess I didn't put that in there. Like I like to put yeah. my, like mix my PT background with my um, classes and how I teach and how I word my warm ups too. Because I like to break that. Like if we're doing these moves and you need to be like, I think like if you need to do a front knee hook and I, what is the muscles that you need to contract to be able to hold your knee on the pole for the front knee hook and hold that that move. I like to put my warm up based on like the certain moves that we need to do. Um, so I like to, that's how I really like run things. And then I like to do it based on like, if people ask me on what to work on at home um, and things like that, I like to base it on my PT background. Okay. Like this needs to do this. And what's the really the thing that's holding you back from this move? Is it your grip strength? Is it your, you know what I mean? Like, is your glute strength? Is it this? And then give it to them, break it down in that way and prescribe it that way. Um, because I do it every day at my job. So yeah, I like to ch- like tie those two together. Yeah. I, I need you as my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's really awesome. I, I love I love crossing the, the two paths. It's really awesome. Yeah. Right. I would I think my body would really benefit from a physical therapist slash holding. So I have lots of imbalances. Yes, but that's okay. me. <laughs> but a lot of pole dancers too, because we got our 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 favorite side, and we yeah. have our <laughs> side. So. Oh, well, let's talk a little bit about like uh, training on that one side, especially like um, we'll move into like competition stuff. Because mm-hmm. when you train for a competition, um, you're only doing that one side. Do you have any advice for for us who are training the one side? Like, what should we do um, to counteract that one sidedness? I always say if you're going to, I'm trying to adapt, uh, adopt this saying more, but if you can do that move, like if you're say you're training these moves on that one side, then you can give yourself time to at least do it once on the other side. So then you take like, you know what I mean? You're taking away the amount of time that you're spending training that one side and putting it into your other side. So if you do a Gemini on the one side and you did it two times, you can at least do it once like at least half the time that you do it on that one side or train a combo on that one side, you can at least do it once on the other side to keep yourself even at least once during the whole training session. And then you don't have overuse of the one side. Um, so that's what I like to tell people. And also to counteract those muscle imbalances, cross training, what strength training outside of pole um, is a really good way to help with those muscular imbalances. And, um, you know, getting, if you want, get a strength and conditioning coach, um, maybe that'll come in the future, you know, um, but <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, strength training outside of, of pole will help really, really help with muscular imbalances, um, outside of just training your other side. Um, yeah. You That's heard it here. Idea. Always do it at least once. Always yes. <laughs> 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 and it also makes you stronger too. Like yeah. it could be strong on both sides. Like so your body will be able to do things that it couldn't do before when you're only training that one side. Yeah. I, yeah. I really love this more. And my studio, we try to tell people like every time when they do a trick, like we learned some noon class, we try to make people do it on the other side, no matter what move it is. Um, not saying you have to do it on both sides to sign off, but at least try it once on the other side. So you don't run into being like me and <laughs> getting to the advanced, you know, pole levels and like, geez, a Gemini on the other side, what's that supposed to feel like? <laughs> so in the last year, I've been really forcing myself to do everything on the other side. I also take like, I do beginner classes, but I take lower level, like inverting classes now and do everything on like at my studio and do everything on the other side. That's another way to really force yourself to do the other side. Like you take a class at your studio, a one a class, like lower level, and then do the whole class on the other side, the whole class. And then you have no excuse. It's a whole class dedicated to it. <laughs> <laughs> I love right, that. though, that's perfect. Though. 
as teachers too, like um, if we, if we only use the one side, like our best side to show our students, like yeah. that will suck for our bodies. So it's really good for us to be balanced. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm, I've been trying to get into teaching my like beginner classes, like on my other side only, like the side that I Same. don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, then I, then I also forces you to do it. So like, you don't have a choice to, but yeah. to use the other side. And it's really hard to use your other side and teach and like talk through things. You'll find out real quick that you need to be training your other side more. <laughs> right, right, right. I want to get past the right. point where I'm like, hello, dancers. This is my silly side. Sorry. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, and you have to do this, this, this. And I'm like, okay, I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that really, was all that I expected it to be. <laughs> right. It really, it really does help though. I've started some of my higher level classes training my other side, and it really does condition you fast if you add that into the teaching. It, does, it, does. Yeah. it sucks at first, but it does help. <laughs> it, does yeah, yeah. it does suck at first for sure. <laughs> right I don't want to be unbalanced at the end of this competition season but are you currently working on on any competitions coming up or I'm not not until I won't be competing until PSL Atlantic I know I competed at PSL Northeast last year I loved it I love PSL Northeast I know you were you were um I was gonna say that's maybe where I saw you yeah yeah okay um <laughs> And I loved PSL Northeast. And then I turned around and competed at PSL Atlantic, like not that long after. Um, but it was like too uh, stressful for me to have both, like they were too close together for me. And also like I had a lot of transitions at that time. Like I became an instructor during competition training. And also like in my act, like my regular work job, like outside of pool, pool instructing, I had a, some changes that happened there. Um, and I had a student at work. So it was just like a lot stress wise and I realized that I don't like that and so I wanted to give myself more time to prepare and I also didn't really like my routine at PSL Atlantic that much I wanted to give myself more time to get better and expand and be more flexible and be more strong and have like a bigger you know binder of moves and binder of things that I could like pick from to put into my routine to make it something that I wanted it to be like I was happy with and I was proud of um, so that's why I'm not competing at PSO Northeast this year, but I will be at PSO Atlantic and I'm ready to pop out and I can't wait to pop out at PSO Atlantic. Um, I already got my song choice. My song has been picked for like a year now for PSO Atlantic 2023. <laughs> I can't wait. I rec I like rehearse in the shower like every day of what the things I want it to, to be like what I want. I write down moves that I want to be in there or combos like I, I can't wait till I start competition training <laughs> for it because like it's about to be bomb and I can't wait to put it on stage and what's to come for it yeah I'm so excited for you to show right? I can't wait to see it I would love to visit PSO Atlantic one year I want to visit all of them but that would be fun yes. sure. <laughs> yeah it's pretty bomb. I really do like PSO Northeast though the vibe is super like everyone's just so chill like PSO Atlantic is also chill but but PSL Northeast is just like super, super chill. Like, and it's just, like, <laughs> really, really like it. Um, so yeah. I That's funny. Up. I've only been to, yeah, Northeast. Oh, I went to nationals, but that was different. I didn't really like hang out. I was too scared. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All of them have different vibes. Yeah. And I've only been to the two. So like, I don't really know about the others um, in terms of that. But I, I really, I think I might like do PSL excuse me, Atlantic, and then do PSO Northeast later on in the year, probably. Yes. The same routine and just, like, do it again or something. But I think I'm right, because I really <gasps> like Northeast a lot. <laughs> I say it a lot. Yes. <laughs> but I really liked it a lot, so, yeah. yeah. So excited to see your piece. <laughs> yeah. uh, and meet you in person. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have um, um, any plans for the future and poll that you wanted to reveal <laughs> <laughs> um I mean I don't I don't have like I don't have anything to like on the books to reveal right now but there is like I said like there's things that I want to do with pole dancing and like you know tying in cross training and tying in my PT background and things like that into more pole dancing 
and making it more of a, you know, instead of it just being a thing on the side, being it more of a like, this is what I do kind of thing. So that's all like in the works of what I want to be in, like, you know, in my brain and things like that. That's what I want for my uh my future with pole dancing. Cause I, I really like pole dancing and I really like instructing, but I feel like I have I have so much more to give to the world of pole dancing outside of just that. Um and I feel like it needs to be shared. And I want people, like I said, I don't want people to get injured. That's the big main <laughs> goal that I want. So nothing to share yet outside of that, but you know, in the future, maybe in like the next year, I'm hoping that there will be things that I can bring to the world of pole dancing. Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. That's so exciting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love to do like in future interviews, like if, with everybody we've interviewed to, just to see where everyone's at. And I can't yeah. wait to see where your journey leads you. I'm excited. I really like, I just, I'm really passionate about this stuff. So Hell yeah. <laughs> like I, I really like the body and the muscles and everything that it takes to do oh. certain moves. Like when I look at pole moves, I think of it like, okay, so what does this, what muscles do I need to do this? And how much range of motion do I need to do this? And what does my body, like I, break things down in my head that way. And so I want it to like, to give that to people because it's really fun to me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> so it's really fun to me. I love oh it. Gosh, I'm so interested in all of that, but I never went to school for any of that. I just did the dance. I was a dancer. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I'm you so interested in muscles and yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know, you know my, my um, teacher training had this, you know, enough for our, our teacher training stuff, but like, I would love to just, you know, right. know as much as possible about like how things move and like, yeah. And how to. It's big, so you, there's a lot of information we can get from it. I really do yeah. like, also, like the pole physio, they have great stuff on like, yes, you know, breaking things down and um, the pole PT. I have one of her books that breaks a lot of things down that I love. I know they have the anatomy book now, but I really want to get, so, you know, you have options out there too. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. So, the, but I really like them. They, they have a great job. Go to do a great job of breaking things down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as far as like pole teacher training, have you looked into any of them yet? Um, which ones would you recommend? Um, <laughs> I mean because I mean I took the elevated one and and it had a lot of like you know anatomy and stuff like that in there but I don't know if you had looked into any more that you um, thought were I had looked in what is their actual name like I one the same company with Expole um oh, that elevated or not sorry uh oh. expert. <laughs> expert thank you I was like what is it called <laughs> the e oh. And I had looked into that one. I heard really good things about it, like that they do go into like the anatomy and things like that. Um, that's the only one I really looked into doing. It's just like, you know, the time, like the time never matches up with the time that I can take things or like how far it is away, you know what I think? But I think that's the only one I've had really, really good, um, heard really good reviews on. I would love to like get into other ones and things like that, like the elevated one too. Um, I think it's, but anything that has like that, they actually go into the anatomy and like breaking things down from that, from a body standpoint, I think it's super, super important because everybody has a different body, but the muscles, the bones, the ligaments, all of those things are in everyone's body for the most part. But, you know, so like they like just go into like the basis, like the basis of things, the root of the things. Like this is what the body is like. I think it's super important to know from an anatomy standpoint, just basic muscle groups, even like no, like you know what I'm telling you that you have to know the very specifics, but having like a basics on anatomy, I think is very important. And it will make you go very much further in terms of um pull it like being an instructor because you can that'll help you break down things no matter what type of person you're working with um yeah so that's what I would suggest <laughs> yeah yeah right because it's so helpful for our students too because um a lot of them come from no background of anything and then they're like what's a quad muscle <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like muscles are so important they're so cool <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just really like really into like I'm a nerd I'm just a nerd for those yeah. so like, <laughs> It really makes me excited. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. No, I, I love it too. We, like we had a little workshop of physics of pole and I'm not like a science person, but having it explained and like the physics explained in the pole way really like spoke to me. So yes. I, I love like, <laughs> like science. I just don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, I also <laughs> don't like physics either. <laughs> Like, I literally just like certain things. I'm like, mm, science, I'm like, oh, the anatomy, right? like that. But other sciences, I'm like, ugh, physics. <laughs> but, but I do like pole physics because it's like that, when it's broken down that way, it's really awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if we all like had um, like, oh, well, you know, I don't like chemistry or whatever, but if we related it somehow to pole, like I would get it. Oh my God, exactly. Seriously, like learning something and relating it to something that you love makes it so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Any chemists out there, please help That's us. <laughs> help us. Chemistry's hard. <laughs> it is. I mean, maybe they can help us with like the, like hand grips and stuff. That's true. That's right? like, yeah. <laughs> there's a chemistry to that. Yes. Speaking of oh. hand grips, <laughs> which, which full, full grips do you use? Um, I do hand grip wise. I do use dry hands. And then my studio sells one called girly grip, which I like to, it's basically the same thing as dry hands. Um, but I use those specific, like just the only those two I've tried for hand grips. And then I like dew point, the light dew point, because I know they have different levels, light dew point for my skin, like and body grip. Um, and I only use dew point for the most part. I haven't tried any other ones. I've tried pole poise, their like um, body grip and their hand grip. However, I don't like them more. I don't like them more than the ones that I use. So I've tried those and they're okay for me, but I, I don't like them as much as the ones that I use. So I try to stick to what I like. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Do you find that you... Every season? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask, yeah. <laughs> Does, Does it, it change, change every, every season? season? Um, no, but I can, I can basically use the same grip all year round. It's mostly how I... Um, moisturize my skin. That's really like how, like I can use the same grip all year round because I know you're not tough. I know the rule is don't put on any lotion before you pull. Um, but like, I usually like, if I know I'm pulling the next day, I will shower that night. Or if I shower that morning and I'm pulling in the afternoon, if I, I have to put on lotion, like a water-based lotion, because if I do not, I will not stick to the pole at all. So it, even with grip, it won't, it won't work. I, my body literally will just slide off because I'm just so dry. So I have to put on a water-based lotion, like either the night before or the morning of that pull day. And then my grips will, will work perfect. If I don't put on anything and I'm dry, no, no grip will work. Like it'll work a little bit, but it'll actually be like, not good. And, like, it's just terrible. I just feel dry um, all over. And then Obviously, if I put on lotion like, like a more of like a oil based lotion, like I can't obviously I can't do anything. But if I use water based, I'm pretty good. Even if I use it like five hours before I pull, I can still pretty much be fine because, like I said, it's it's better for me than being dry completely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what is the the lotion that you use? Uh, just some like Jergens. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about I, this in the studio the other day because we're like, winter's coming. What do we do? <laughs> yeah, and I know they have that new like uh lotion for pole dancers. I never tried it's it. It's a pole physics. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. my one of the instructors at my studio uses it and she likes it. She thinks he, uh, she said it's work for it, but I'm just using jerkins. It's it's work for me and, and it still works for me. Like I, you know, that's the way the the concoction that has worked for me. Um, but I find, like I said, if I have the do it the same, like the same way all year round, it always works. It's never really not worked for me unless it's like super humid or something like, you know what I mean? Like that, like I just can't change. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then we're all just sliding down the floor. Yeah, like just- <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Routines, routines. I wonder if I, it's interesting that you bring that up because I'm like, while you're telling me us your routine, I'm like, 
I wonder if that will help my pole game too. <laughs> like maybe finding out about my dry and moist skin and seeing right? what's going on that day. A lot of it is like your like what's like what kind of skin you have. Like is does it if it's really dry, like grip is only gonna do so much. Yes. You gotta have like, <laughs> caution, the right level of moisture. You don't wanna be too moist, but you don't wanna be too dry. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Right. That's why I always say summer, <laughs> summer is my best time to pull because I work yeah. with the humidity. <laughs> that is true. The humidity is, it does help sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. Get everything. And then in the winter, mm-hmm. I winter, winter, I just slide right <laughs> down. Uh, we're the opposite, Chris. <laughs> in the <laughs> summer, I excessively sweat. So like, I can't yeah. do anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually find that like I if I have a good amount of like like from sweat from warm up too like if I get a certain good amount of sweat I stick really well to the pole. Yes. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. sweat works to my benefit. Like I just that just like where your skin is just like tacky a little bit. I find that I stick really, really well to the pole. Obviously, if I'm like drenched in sweat and the whole yeah. <laughs> my body's just a sweat ball. But if I have a, the right amount of sweat on my body, I do stick really well. <laughs> That's how I am too. Like once I get that like first, I'm like, okay, now the air conditioner can go on. <laughs> so Food for thought. Food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So many things to try now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <New ideas. laughs> uh, do you have any advice for beginner polars? Um, my advice to beginner polars is to just do what works for you and don't look at other people because everybody's journey is different. What, you know, it could take you longer to get somewhere, but it's about the journey for you and how, what you're doing to get there. Um, and you don't, it, like any other person's journey, you don't know what they had to go through to get there. Um, yes, some people could get there faster, but like I said, it's just about your journey and what you're doing. And and be consistent and don't give up. Be your own motivation, be consistent because poll is awesome and Instagram is great but also it can be terrible because it makes things look easy and like it should just come easy and you know like everything looks like it's almost perfect sometimes um so like what you see on instagram is not always real like even if we post a really great video it might have took a lot of runs to get to that video (laughs) you know and so like you will like it's it's hard it's not easy it's hard it's going to take time it's going to take consistency um it's going to take you putting in the work um cross train please so you don't get hurt early (laughs) and make it a habit early so that um you know like I said you don't get hurt and have to be sitting out because nobody wants to sit out from something they really love doing um so yeah that was my advice cross train stick to your own journey and be consistent Yes, those are the things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too funny. Do you have any outside hobbies? We know your muggle job is a physical therapist. Any outside things you like to do besides staying active and pole dancing? Like literally, that's my life. <laughs> <laughs> like legit. Like when people ask me my hobbies, I'm like pole dancing, weightlifting, like strength training. <laughs> I really you know, uh, you I like used, collect shoes. You yeah, like, like I just love. I like to like you know like try to learn more on the body, <laughs> and um, I like to watch. I do like to watch Netflix. I love a good. I like to binge watch Netflix. Like I don't like to just watch one show at a time. <laughs> Give me the whole season so I can stay up till three a.m. and regret it the next day. <laughs> so I do like. <laughs> love a good uh binge watch oh i like plants too um i am an indoor plant mom and i love my babies um but yeah i like to look at different plants and like collect different plants um i'm still new to the game on that one but i'm trying to think do i have any other hobbies sometimes i like to hike with my husband (laughs) every once in a while yeah like what else do i like to do (laughs) outside of pole pole is our lives (laughs) 
<laughs> Love it. Some outdoor stuff, nature. <laughs> yeah. So outside yes. of pole dancing, I guess. And like working out. It's it doesn't matter. <laughs> like pole dancing and working out are my favorite hobbies because it makes me feel the best. So yes. Yeah. Right. I let, I love oh, that. Also, right. you keep coming back to like how it makes you feel because that's really the most important thing is yeah. like this pole dancing thing. Like, you know, as long as we're having fun, <laughs> that's really all that yeah. matters. Exactly. And doing it for you, oh. like, yeah. whatever the reason is, just doing it for you and no one else. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. do whatever style of pole makes you feel happy and don't right. try to change yourself just because you think you need to fit like a certain I don't know, like box, you know what I mean? Like you do what you want to do. So I, that's why I'm just like, you know what? I like tricks. So just, you know, if you like it, then do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So true. <laughs> oh, gee. I think that is all of my questions. I know. Is there anything else you would like to share with everyone? Anything at all? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I think I talked, I talked a lot about it. We got a good range of things, I think. I don't know. I like pole dancing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, I guess that's what I have to share. <laughs> Thank you so much for finding pole dancing and for being willing to share your wealth of knowledge with everyone. And I can't wait for the exciting things you have planned for the future yeah. that will benefit me. <laughs> <laughs> it will benefit all pole dancers. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And in the yeah, meantime, hopefully sure. we can travel down to Virginia and take class with you in person. Oh, for sure. I love that. For sure. Please come to Harrison. The, the mountains we live in. I live in the Shenandoah Valley, and um, so like there's a lot of like mountains around us, which is really really nice. It's very pretty. Yeah, there's some really nice places to hike too. Um, ah, I've never yeah. been down there. The views, are, there. the views are usually nice on the way down and things like that. Like you see a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. hopefully Sounds beautiful. we'll be able to tour. We want to visit <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> especially the places. <laughs> People we've interviewed, we would love to visit all of you. That would be amazing. You have to, I have to come to the studio in, um, in Boston. Because you guys are not in Boston, in Massachusetts. Yeah, yes, we're in yeah. Springfield. Yeah. Springfield, four yeah. months, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will say um, that, like, um, being that I'm PT, like, you know, obviously I can't prescribe you the whole like exercise thing online through Instagram. But like, if anyone, like, you know, like sometimes if you need, like, help or you, you just want like someone to talk to that has that background and you're like injured and you're trying to figure out what to do like you know should you go see the doctor should you go to the PT should whatever like in that aspect for in terms of injury and things like that if you need any advice I'm very open to uh like you know re people reaching out to me on Instagram and things like that because I just I just want people to have knowledge and not feel like they are like kind of like walking in circles because they don't know what to do you know what I mean so I'm always open my dms are open <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you for that, that. <laughs> yes we will uh, be sh we'll definitely share your instagram link and any other link you want us to share yeah. with some of that. we'll have that all in the comments and notes for all of y'all you heard it Hit her yes. Up. yes so <laughs> please please because like I said I don't want people to get injured and if you do get injured I want you to get the best care yeah yeah right like there's often times where students will be like oh this thing happened to me and and I always say like I am not a doctor but you should like but that would be great to have you know you as a, a resource to fill in those blanks if we have multiple you know yeah students like, having issues I'm here <laughs> and I'll, you know I can help to the best of my abilities you know what I mean so I just yeah. Yeah. Pre-coaching services, getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. <It's> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. Thank you so much, Kanisha. You were yeah. so amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I had a good thank time. Thank you. It was, it was truly a pleasure for me too. This was fun. Yeah, yeah it's it's so much for having me. I'm always happy yeah. to be here. Um, I know I talk a lot. I'm really, <laughs> but no, love it. <laughs> yeah. 
can't wait to talk more like in a in maybe a year after you get I don't, I'm yeah. putting a timeline on you. <laughs> I mean, like, when are you going to get it together? No, within the year. So it's not you. I could say it too. So okay. <laughs> I'm like, in the next three months, when? <laughs> so next oh month, God. when you're. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> too funny. Well, I guess if we have nothing else, we should do our sign off. <laughs> Uh, my name is Mandy Mack. <laughs> and I am Chris Rivers. And we're here with Kanisha. And we are standing off and pull on the call. Oh, Ooh. 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 Ooh, those are hot shoes today. <laughs> uh, so